My name is Catherine Chabiron, and you can see I'm working for Forcia. Forcia is the automotive industry. We are a uh, main uh, supplier of automotive equipment to cars like seats and uh, internal uh, panels, cockpits, uh, exhaust pipes, and so on. So we were working on the lean manufacturing for quite some time. And in 2004, we started thinking, oh my god, shouldn't we extend that to the support functions? Because if you try to be lean on the shop floor, and your purchasing, or your accounting, or your IT, that don't have a clue what you're trying to do, will end up in a lot of uh, misunderstandings and so on. So we started in 2004, mostly with uh, accounting, because we were looking for something that looked like a plant, and we went to payables, and we were looking at those invoices coming in, waiting to be transformed into an authorization to pay the supplier. So it was like a, a small plant with daily inflows, very repetitive tasks, and an output, a finished good, which is an authorization to pay. So we started with payables, and then we went on to um, uh, purchasing and IT, and we started in IT uh, basically in 2007. So we have now about four years' experience of lean IT, and I myself uh, report to the CIO of Forcia, uh, although I'm not an IT person at all, um, but you will see what we've tried to do in lean IT, and uh, don't see this as a model line, just a bit of sharing of our experience. So the, our problem was, how do we make people aware of those idle tickets? Remember, they are in the machines. You don't look at them. You shifted the problem away because you're waiting for somebody else. So we started doing some manual visual management of those pies. And if, for example, I'm, I'm level three, obviously I will have a stock of tickets that are work in progress. I'm working on them now. Okay, fine. And I'm putting my, my little tickets. We've started with Post-it, very useful. And I've got Post-its for each single ticket I'm working on. And I've got a date here when it was assigned to me. So I'm able, for example, to put an expectations. My work in progress should not exceed, for example, uh, 10 days. And the moment it exceeds 10 days, I shift it here. And I do the same with uh, waiting for user. For example, user is supposed to send us a print screen or whatever, or refine the specs, or pending a validation. And I've got the same, the same story. I've got tickets all over the show. So people would f focus and still focus a lot on this. This is my job, it's assigned to me, I work on it, I try. And you didn't have that many here. The big problem was there. And it's still difficult to get people to monitor those and to create standards. Because they say, oh my god, why should I bother? This is pending validation with somebody else. You know, why should I bother to look at Five days, for example. You see what I mean by standard gaps versus a standard versus an expectation? So we very much try to pull them out of the system and very visual here. On the distributed teams, we have something like this, which we are starting and we're still experimenting. In for example, in my team, I've got two people in Portugal, two in France. So in each office, we have a visual management on board with uh, our names. We put the tickets, the task that we have to do. For the time being, they just here we have a, a number of things to do. And that's been applied to a, quite a number of teams already. We put them here. When we are ready, to work on them, we add a, a time, a deadline. 
and that becomes our work in progress. When the deadline is exceeded, we put them in late. And we have something like done. So this is visual on our, on our board and allows the discussions inside the, the meeting room. But the other team in Portugal does exactly the same. And we have this on a shared place uh, on an Excel. We reproduce it on an Excel. It's not perfect. That's one example. We do a lot of traveling and visiting each other, a lot of discussion, a lot of sharing. Traps and difficulties, not a surprise. The difficulties is to convince management to develop their own standards. It's not lean is a line management responsibility. It's not consultants like me who come and write standards. It's each manager has got to develop his own standards. So we'll come back to this point. The traps is, of course, to design the standard away from where things happen. Do that in a room with people who have never been close to the shop floor or to the office. And the second trap is to never change standards because then they become procedures. So a standard is the best known sequence today. How do we change that permanently? If we don't change it permanently, it's no longer a work standard. It's become a procedure. It's become another waste. QRCI is like this, and the A3 is like this. <laughs> OK, that's your answer. <laughs> Both of them spent quite some time about understanding the problem. Whoops. Remember what Dan Jones was saying? Most of the guys will fill up the A3. Sorry, I didn't put them in. Most of the guys will go very quickly to here, which is action plan and so on. And I'll keep them bringing, bringing them back here. here. So same story. We spent quite a lot of time focusing, deselecting, eliminating, reducing scope. So that is really the important part. In the QRCI, we add something about protect the user, because QRCI, we really use it on an IT outage. It's the story, stop the line, to understand. So here we've got an incident. We stop, we learn. Here we don't have an incident, but we know the process is not under control. We want to improve. Then the second part is about causes. And both are doing exactly the same thing. What are the possible causes? What test do we do to confirm the cause? And uh, what do we eliminate? The light is off. It can be because the bulb is down, or it can be because there is a general power failure. Before I change the bulb, I want to understand whether this created the cause, was the cause or not. That's an easy example, but when you have, for example, a process fails, and the two causes are, uh, for example, the users were not properly trained, or the system is uh, stupid and we have to change him, what we usually did in IT in the past was we changed the system. What we try now and do is go and sit down and see whether the user has got ergonomy issues or training issues or whatever. So before, this is really what we're trying to do here, is understand the causes and eliminate the causes. And once we've retained some causes, do the five whys. You're all familiar with the five whys? You ask the question why, 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 until you reach the root cause. And it's only when you've got the root cause that you do the action plan. So here in the A3, because we are addressing usually more complex 
uh, issues, we, we will have a strategy of countermeasures because we can have this option, that option, and so on. We will have our action plan, our follow-up, our, our results, and the lessons learned. You could use you could use the, two, the you could use this for that that for this etc. The the difference in Forcia we just happen to have two templates in Forcia. The difference is this one is really organized to tackle a very very specific incident, uh, whereas this one is more open in terms of template. You can add uh, diagrams, flowcharts, uh, Excel uh, pastes, and so on. So it's more open. We help them focus, and that's, that's really how we use A3s and, and so on. Is, okay, let's take one, one little approach, and we're going to work on this one. And once this is reasonably under control, shift to another one. For example, we're never going to try, for one given manager, we don't try and, and address three, more than three problems at a time. It's impossible. You can't do operational work and do Kaizen on three different topics at the same time. It's impossible. So, uh, really, this, this is so important, this refocus all the time. The, 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 the scope reduction, the, the problem elimination, focus on one. I, I believe I've got a, another, another t 10 or 15 years uh, of work in lean IT before reaching really a, re a lean transformation. But we, we're trying to do a bit of, a, a bit of everything and, and trying to be successful at, on at least some, some items. The, the, I would say, if I had one word to say as a conclusion, is consistency in the approach is key. If you change your mind about how to do things, about rules, about standards, and so on every time, consistency is key. So what is the problem you're wanting to solve? Uh, how do you uh, propose to solve it? Uh, how do you see whether you are under control? And keep hammering, hammering all the time the same leitmotif.